Hello, hello, data taters. This is Jay Oliver Glasgow saying, where's my duct tape? It works great on vinyl, rubber, even wood. Put an end to ugly repairs with Scotch brand transparent duct tape. <laughs> Fixed table leg. Our nation is being torn apart by anger and violence. And everyone is looking for the right duct tape to put it back together again. Some say the problem is racial. Others say it's the system. And still others say that it's systematic racism, whatever that is. At Privacy Co-op, our job is to serve people who feel their information is being exploited by large entities. We help give them a voice in how their information can be used by others. One of our founders once said that the universe is made up of ever-expanding information. That means that you are putting out information that others may exploit just by, well, being you. That's what driving while black is. It's people putting out information that's been exploited by large entities, namely police, for decades. Don't believe me? We'll examine the data today. So, at the Privacy Co-op, the question was raised, how is this any different from what we do every day? Helping people who feel their information is being exploited by large entities. To help us answer that question, we have a very special guest in the studio with us today, Mr. Vernon Edwards. Welcome, Vernon. Thank you for having me, Jay. Nice it's to good see to you. Good to have you here. You know, uh, it's, it's something to have an NFL star. <laughs> <laughs> Here with uh, us. I played. I, I played a couple years. I was star would be kind of pushing it. Know, San Diego whatever. Chargers and yeah. you sacked John Elway. I would say that was uh, some some highlights. Yeah, and yeah. Then I got the picture over a while. You do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> SMU yeah. Mustangs. Mustangs Gold for life. Ponies. There you go. And uh, your father was a police officer in Houston. Yes, and. Uh, 1972 NFL draft pick of the New York Giants, yeah. Oh, wow, that's yeah, right, yeah. your father did. Uh, yeah, yeah, baby, we get it in. the Giants. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We, got some, we, got, yes. we got some NFL yes. in yeah. the house. Um, and, and you're no stranger to uh, some of the racial tensions in the United States. You were one of the first children to be involved in busing, school busing, is that right, in Houston, oh, Texas? yeah, yeah, yes. Um, we were actually uh, part of uh, part of getting bussed over, yeah, to Will Rogers Elementary School, which was right next door to Houston Independent School District in, uh, in Houston, Texas. Yes. So you're this trifecta of information uh, from, you know, all points of views that are pertinent uh, to the problems we're facing today. And I've been in IT for like two decades, which is way too long to be in any industry. That's right. For, <laughs> that's right. You're, you're a, a technologist with a Fortune 50 company. Yeah. That's pretty good. Very prestigious. You sure they're not 20? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, well, I'm just checking. All right. So uh, at the Privacy Co-op, we were very right. interested in what's going on, and right. we uh, sponsored a study. Okay. And we asked five questions. I want to ask them to you, see what your responses are. You uh, always scare me when you do this. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so go the first ahead. question right. we ask, and this was across um, a, a segment of the population that was evenly divided. It was properly proportioned racially, okay. right? So okay. we had the right percentages okay. um, and distributed across all economic strata and all geographic locations within the United States. And we okay. asked this question. We said, okay. have you ever felt wrongfully profiled by police? Yes. Yes, yes. Seriously, the the one that I think really probably shaped my view most of this actually happened uh, my freshman year at uh, Southern Methodist uh, here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, as an 18 year old kid, uh, we were here for uh, two days. We were right in the middle of two days, and uh, after after practice was was over. Uh, we decided to uh, drive up the street to uh, go Taco Bell, and uh, we were profile, right? You had uh, 
three African American men in the car. Um, we just happened to be in the same place where a Taco Bell was burglarized uh, shortly before, I guess we came that way. It was uh, disturbing to say the least. As an 18 year old kid, um, to see multiple police cars surround you, uh, weapons drawn, maybe, I mean, in eyesight of your university, right? Uh, and these are college kids. Yeah, we were 18. I think uh, it may have been three freshmen and a sophomore in the car at the time. Yeah. And so that's just one incident that really stood <laughs> out in my mind because it was the first time really, really being away from home. Yeah, that's, that's the one uh, that's probably stuck with me the most. Would it surprise you if there were 34% of the respondents agreed with you? 34% of the people we asked that question to said they have been wrongfully profiled 30, by the police. 34%. Yeah. It's greater than the number of any particular minority. It cuts across all races. That's not, that's not surprising. And that's a, it's actually, uh, to be honest with you, it's good to know that not all the ire is pointed toward one racial group. Oh, everybody's feeling it. And that may be why uh, the groups and the protests are so diverse, right? Mm, everybody, yeah, everybody has some kind of story like the one I told or maybe not as bad or some may be worse. As a son of a, mm -hmm. a Houston policeman, um, would you feel uncomfortable going into a police station to register a complaint against a police officer? Would my father be there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I would be a little bit nervous. Like if my father wasn't there, I would be, I would be nervous, especially as young as, um, the time I'm speaking to at age 18. Did you uh, report it? No. You no, didn't. didn't? You didn't? You're not alone. No. When we asked this question to the survey, 56.5%. 56.5. That's right. greater than the number of people that said that they had experienced it. Right. Right? Wow. Would feel uncomfortable so you're telling with me, going into So you're telling me 56% of the people that you surveyed, right? said that they would have a problem going to report this. Yes. So either one or two things happened that day. Either somebody was not up front mm. about the 34% or we have a big perception problem mm. with, with our the police departments Based upon that perception problem, mm -hmm. we found out that people didn't go to the police department, right? They didn't go file a complaint. I didn't. Our stats show us that for the average person in right. this uh, survey, right. uh, they experienced this for more than seven years, the average person. They've experienced this at least an average of four times within that seven years. Right. And 66% of the respondents said that they didn't feel heard by somebody that could take action right. and who actually wanted to or cared to take action. Right. Wow. So wow. just by the fact that they're um, feel a right. little unsafe about going to a police yeah. station to turn in a complaint, yeah. you've got 66% who felt like over a long period of time right. they haven't been hurt. And if you look at the numbers, the emotions that they felt at the time of the incident right. versus how they feel now. Right. We see a very strong shift from the initial emotion of being scared right. or, or angry right. to now over time, right. it has become sad or right. bitter. So the, the, the volatile emotions have now moved right. into the vitriolic emotions, which right. we know can fuel sustain violence for a longer period of time. You're, you know, if you get angry, you, could get, you can get violent for a short period of time and right. burn out. Right. But if you're bitter, you, yeah. can, you can fight it's that war for a long time, right? With many of the movements that you see nowadays, uh, the Me Too movement, 
probably, is one I would probably like to call out, right? Those folks um, that were impacted by such horrific things were, kind of feel really sad, uh, probably some even blame themselves, right? But the longer uh, you, that stuff keeps going around in your head and you have no outlet, right, to discuss it, right, or uh, to feel like uh, your views matter, right? Yeah, I can see uh, anger, sadness, turning to being very bitter um, to the point of, yeah, sustained pain and hurt. Mm. Bitterness goes goes so deep, and I think if anything was caged or felt devalued at one point, they would uh, anybody, any group, would strike back. If people had an outlet, right, right, where we could uh, intersect that emotion before it converts into bitterness. Right. We asked this question, if a trusted third party nonprofit right. could take your complaint, keep a dated record, right. and give it to the proper authorities for you at no charge, right. would you feel more comfortable registering a police complaint? And remember the first number is 34%. Right. Second one where they said they were a little fearful or uncertain about going into a police department right. was 56.5%. Right. Any guesses at where the, the numbers would go and fall on this? I think the numbers would go up. And yeah. they did. Yeah, because you have them in a place of comfort where they feel safe to voice their concerns. Yeah, 75%. 75. 75% 75 said that they would utilize a third party to voice a complaint Interesting. Versus the fifty-six point five percent that said they wouldn't, they would feel fearful, right. and the sixty-six percent that said they haven't. Right. Right. Yeah. Hmm. The next question we asked was, mm -hmm. uh, would you tell friends and family about such a complaint feature if it were available? Yes. Um, and the numbers again grew. Yeah, because it, if you're in a safe environment where you can express. Uh, your views of what happened to you, and you can be heard, right? I think all of us would feel a lot safer in that environment. Sure. I know I would, at least. When you look at the 86.5%, that's the number, uh -huh. that said that they would tell a, a friend or family member, mm -hmm. uh, do you think that that's coming from perspective of it? they're excited about sharing this with somebody because it's something deep that happened to them? or that they know somebody that it's occurred to, or, or both, some sort of a shade of both there. I, I think it's a shade of both, right? Because uh, it's, it's, it's nothing like when something happens to your family member, right? It's mm -hmm. like it happened to you, right? Mm -hmm. you, you can feel what happens to people that you love and that you care about, right? Yes, because they're going to want to get the word out. So yeah, as, as the statistics seem to be moving in a cone, we're mm -hmm. getting bigger and bigger numbers with every question. It seems that way. The very last question was an right. interesting one. We, we now pull it full circle back to the mm -hmm. individual. Right. And we say, how likely would you be right. to use such a feature today to report a wrongful police action from your past? Now, that's on a scale of 1 to 10. Right. So it, it's getting away from would you or wouldn't you. Right. It's how likely would you, right, right uh, be to use this. Now, uh, out of 10, right. you can put that slider anywhere you want. Right. Where do you think the average person in that entire survey, even the ones that said it didn't happen to me, where do you think they would put that slider? I think it would be definitely above 86. Yeah. Right? I don't know, because uh, you never get 100% anything, right? Uh, <laughs> Nothing that I ever tried, right? Yeah. Uh, but I, I, would, I would believe that number would go up. It, it came close to 100%. Uh, 9.4 out of 10 people move that lever to a 9.4 of right. how likely they would be right. to report something through a vehicle if they had a third party trusted entity that would help them do that. Yeah. Uh, trust, is such, such, trust is such a big thing, right? 
and having that form to be able to do that and to communicate how you feel, right? Because mm -hmm. we need to, like, we need to talk. Like, we need to express what we feel uh, and when we feel we've been wrong, right? And if you have a way to uh, enable folks to express themselves and know that uh, what's happened to me has been communicated to the proper folks, that this is being tracked, right? It is going to be uh, tracked to resolution, and if a resolution can't be identified, right, you can you can raise those numbers up to your senators, right? Yeah. To your uh, to your congressmen, to your representatives, to your mayors, to your your governors, right? To say, hey, obviously these numbers say we need to do something different, right? Look at look at these numbers. Look at this data. I'm, and I'm sorry, Jay, I'm kind of passionate about data, right? I'm kind of passionate about it. Um, I just believe uh, the correct use of data, right, mm. uh, is so important. People need to be heard by somebody who, A, actually can do something about it, and B, takes them seriously. So I want to show you a little demonstration right now that is uh, somebody using our website, uh, it's a new feature that we've launched where traditionally you could go out and search for a business. Now you can search for a police department and you can see this person's finding their police department. Uh, but we have a, mm -hmm. a new feature that we've added to the card where you can you click complain. And now you can go in and choose from a simple complaint or a civic complaint. Right. And when you choose civic complaint, we're going to show you all the fields that are necessary uh, to fill out uh, for a, a police department complaint. Right. right, so these are all the official uh, fields that you would need to fill out. This is going through the Privacy Co-op. We're a nonprofit organization, and uh, and we're trusted, right. um, and we will track that, uh, and we'll tell you the number of unresolved complaints against uh, each police department. So right. you know, over time, exactly yeah. what you just said yeah. can occur. Like I say, I love data, right? But I think this is great because we all need a safe environment right to express our feelings right mm. we, all, we all need that and that's pretty cool to be able <laughs> to have something to, to be able to do that right and i think it's a i think it's a public service i really do and i think i'm i'm happy you guys are doing it thanks man i appreciate it well vernon it's great having you with us today nice for your man. perspective on this topic uh really appreciate you stopping by anytime Today we learned that this is a problem that we can't fix by changing a system or deporting all the racist or even using duct tape. It only changes when we start to listen to our brothers and sisters and make the choice to actually care about what they are saying. When people feel ignored, anger and even fear turn into sadness and bitterness, which in time is more likely to explode and burn hot for a long time. That's why the Privacy Co-op has introduced our new feature that we demonstrated here today. If someone has exploited your information, visit our site right now. Don't delay. We'll do something about it together. This is Jay Oliver Glasgow saying that the next time you feel like your information is being exploited, don't reach for the duct tape. Come to privacycoop.com. We're listening.